Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. It's good to be with you today. I hope you're having a really good week. It certainly has been great weather around here. Oh, we've had some heavy rain from time to time, but good temperatures, even a good bit of sunshine. It, it really touches my heart how, how blessed we are to be here and how much God watches over us. And then I hear about the fires in the West and the floods in Europe. And, and I think, golly, Lord, I, I, just, I just hope you watch out for those folks too. So this morning, I'd like to share a passage with you. Sort of an interesting passage. It's from Psalm 34 and verse 8. And the first part of it is really short. And it says this, Taste and see that the Lord is good. All oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Now the interesting thing about this passage is that the reasons for tasting and seeing that the Lord is good were all revealed in the seven verses before this one. The psalmist kind of lays out his case and then makes his conclusion. So what I'd like to do is sort of work backwards here. The conclusion is, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, why would you say that? Well, let's look at these other verses. Beginning with verse 1, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Well, I'll stop you. I will praise the Lord at all times. You know, we praise a lot of things. And sometimes, some folks, it's not God. And, and it says here that that he helps the helpless. Now, I think about those who have less in this society. I, I spent a lot of my life in Central America in isolated rural villages, and I've seen people who don't have much, really don't have much, who would, who would ask us for an empty pint-sized jar that we had medicine in, if they could have that so they could store some things. I mean, it's really different in the rest of the world than what we see around here. And it says that, that the Lord helps those who are helpless. Well, then it goes on to say, come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. The Lord's greatness is revealed in life. Oh, I know people talk about scenery, such as the mountains or the forest or the streams. And, and surely that's true. God's greatness is revealed in that. And, and the clouds or the sky before or after a storm or the sunrise or the sunsets. We're blessed where we live to get a whole bunch of variation in that stuff. And, and it's just amazing the greatness that's revealed in that. But God's greatness is also revealed in the lives and the faces of people. The smile, the sense of happiness, the caring, the compassion that people show on each other. That's also demonstrated the greatness of God. And then we go on, he says, the psalmist, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. Now, a lot of people think that God doesn't hear their prayers. And most of the time, the reason they think that is because God didn't answer them in the way that they wanted answered. Now, we have to understand there are two pieces to this prayer thing. One is, who prays? The other is, who answers? See the difference? One party in this prayer answer thing asks the petitions. The other party makes the decision and answers them. 
Now, when we try to do both, <laughs> well, then we don't need God for that. We could have just done it ourselves. And sometimes, maybe a lot of times, and I've been as guilty as others, we pray and we pray and we pray and we don't get the answer that we prayed for. That doesn't mean God didn't hear us. It doesn't mean that God doesn't answer prayers. It just means that he knows more than we do. He really does. And then it goes on to say that he freed me from all my fears. Well, there are lots of things to be afraid of. Today's world, in many places, it's crime, it's scammers, it's disease, it's illnesses, it's climate changing, it's relationships breaking up. You know, there's no end to what we could be afraid of. You make a list, it'd be a pretty long list. But it says here that he freed me from that. We don't have to live in fear. God will free us from fear. That doesn't mean he will free us from the situations that could cause the fear. It just means that he would free us from fear. And then it says, those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. I know a lot of people don't look to God. Maybe you're one of them. Or don't look to God all the time. But if we do, then we can be filled with joy. You see, there's a, there's a sense of, I'm okay as long as I'm in God's hands. You look at Jesus' life and those who followed him, those who crowded around him, they, they just felt like if I could just get close to him, I'd be okay. And the same is true today, even if others don't agree with that. Then it goes on to say, no shadow of shame will darken their faces. I'm not ashamed of my past. I'm saddened by some of the things I did. But I know that God has changed my life. And I know that he has forgiven all of my mistakes up to now. <laughs> and he's going to keep forgiving them. I don't have any shame in that. I do have disappointment. I do have discouragements. So do you. But there's a big difference here. And he says then, in my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. This this goes back to the earlier verse I read about how he pr I prayed and he answered me. He saved me from all my troubles. There is nothing too big for God to handle. There isn't. There's a lot too big for us to handle. But there's nothing too big for God. And so by reading these first few verses... We can reach down here and read verse 8 and see the power of it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I hope in your life you have done that. And if you haven't, I hope you will. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Well, thanks for listening today. I hope you have a great day. If you have a prayer concern or need, let us know. We'll do whatever we can, as fast as we can, to help meet your need. God bless you. I'll talk to you again.